Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Friday. It is Facebook Friday. Let's see. I'm one minute late because I was waiting for a special announcement. And I'm going to tell you about it in just a second. Let's make sure I'm in the right place. Hope you guys have had a good week. It has been a quiet week here. No snakes. No drama, which is always good, right? With three teenage girls. Well, I guess two teenagers and a young adult daughter. You never know what's gonna happen, right? All right, let's see, I'm trying to see. Why am I not coming up? Well, I see some of you coming on. Let's see, okay, let's try this again. I'm excited to buy about today's projects. There we go. Um, they are fun. Christmas, let's see, hopefully my volume is off. Okay, so Christmas projects today. I've given in to Christmas. <laughs> I'm not a giant fan of Christmas, I'm not gonna lie. It's just a lot of work for us mamas, you know? It's just a lot of work, but that's all right. It's still fun to craft for it, right? All right, so um, today we are using the gift of gifting. Is that what it's called? Suddenly I'm drawing a blank. I'm very distracted. Gift of, <laughs> gift of gifting, and I have it over here somewhere. On my on my trays, maybe. Yeah, here it is. Very grab it. Gift of giving. This one right here. It's empty. There's nothing in it. Because we're gonna use, well, there's one. We're gonna use almost all of them today. We're gonna make a card, a treat holder, and a money holder, which is everybody's favorite gift, right? Money. Um, but before we get to that, I wanna tell you a few things. Um, Stampin' Up just announced hot off the presses, one minute ago. Our seasonal sale is what they're calling it. Um, instead of doing a Black Friday sale, they do a seasonal sale every year. And the seasonal sale will be 14th, 15th, and 16th. So that's next Wednesday, Thursday, no, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And there's gonna be several things on sale. 10% off all ribbons and trims. 15% off ink pads, or inks, it says inks. I have to do some more investigating. Does that include markers? I don't know, probably not. Probably just ink pads. 20% off papers. Okay, so that's next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 14th, 15th, and 16th. That's a big announcement that they just announced, all right? So I will put that up in today's post as well so you can um, check it out in case you've been waiting on ribbons, inks, and papers. Okay, um, so this week um, we have new online exclusives. They went live on Tuesday. I've shown you a few of them. I just have the stamp sets here. Um, this one we've seen, Garden Meadow. This is a beautiful springy um, bundle with some great dyes. It has some beautiful designer series paper that goes with it. And then the chubby animals, that's what I'm calling them, the fluffiest friends. They have dyes also. Um, I haven't gotten to play with these at all and I really love these. Fluffiest friends. These are online exclusives, which means they're not going to be in any catalog and that they are basically while supplies last. If they sell out, they might come back. If they sell it, they might not come back. That's the thing with online exclusives. This is my very favorite, Simply Sparkling. Look how cute this is, Simply Sparkling. I know the fonts are backwards, the words are backwards. Um, it says, you, you're so delightful, fizztastic, extra bubbly, always refreshing, slightly sour, hmm, birthday wishes, pop best ever and then look at the little fruits all of that really really cute and of course there's dyes too look the strawberry the cherry the lemon or didn't I see a lemon yeah lemon very cute I can't wait to play with this little bubbles all right so that's a bundle S simply sparkling um the art of texture is another one this one does not have dyes um, oh, Eileen, thank you. She just filled us in. It, the sale next week does include markers, blends, and refills. Excellent. I didn't read anything. I just printed off the flyer, and it doesn't say on here. There's an asterisk next to inks, and it says bundles not included. That's all it says. 
but good. I'm glad you looked that up for us. Thank you. The Art of Texture. I think this is red rubber. Nope, photopolymer. It's a good texture stamp that we need textures in backgrounds a lot of times. So that's a good one. Softly said, I know it's backwards, but you could probably read it, right? Just because you are loved, thinking of you, thank you, and celebrate. They're like watercolor looking. For those of us that can't watercolor words, I cannot do that. That is one thing I cannot do. Um, there was another one that I did not order. It has ducks, and it's kind of in that little sketched draw, drawing look. I'll put the link for online exclusives in the description of this video when I'm done. So you guys, or you can just jump over to stampinup.com. There is a tab at the top. You click, I think it says shop. And one of the categories says online exclusives. So you'll be able to see that. There's also, I want to remind you, this isn't necessarily new this week, but it's new this month or maybe last month. Uh, celebrate the miracle. It's a Hanukkah stamp set. If you need it, if you want it, it's a really good one. Make sure you check it out online. Okay, um, this month All-Star Tutorial Bundle features the, I keep calling it the Autumn Leaves Suite, and it's the All About Autumn Suite, and the PDF has 12 video tutorials, looks like this when it's emailed to you, and then there are links in here for the videos, there's supply lists and measurements in metric and imperial. Mine is a stacked box trio. Um, you have several ways of getting this. If you spend $50 or more with me in November, I'll send you this for free via email. Um, you can also buy it in my PDF store for $15 and it's an instant download. It should be instantly emailed to you. Um, if you don't get this emailed from me or after you purchase it, if it doesn't show up, just send me an email. Let me know. Um, I do find about 10% of my emails either bounce or end up in spam. And I think it's because I put links and the new, the, you, you know, you can shorten a link. There are, there are websites where you can go and post or paste a long link and it makes it a short link. So it's easy to type. And the one that I use is Bitly and apparently it's getting real spammy and a lot of emails are blocking it. So that could be a problem if you don't get an email from me because all of my links usually are in that form. Um, so if you ever get, if you ever don't get the PDF and you think you should have gotten it, or you know you should have gotten it, just send me an email. I am happy to send it to you again. Also, I've had a couple of people, and I say this from time to time, a couple of people who've emailed me and said, I haven't heard back from you. Why aren't you responding? And then I respond, and then they don't reply. Or they reply again a week later, you're still, you still haven't responded to my email. Um, if that is you, please know that I will never ignore an email, ever, ever, ever. It might take me 24 or 36 hours to get to it. And on the weekends, maybe it'll take me till Monday. But please know that I never, ever, ever, ever ignore an email. So if you don't hear back from me, there's a problem. Um, you can message me on Facebook, which I don't encourage because I really have a hard time keeping up with those. Use it as a last resource. Um, but email me again. Look in your spam folder. I really do think I live in some people's spam folders, <laughs> unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, so, and I think maybe because my email isn't like a, at Gmail or Yahoo, so it's kind of an unrecognizable one that maybe sometimes emails think I'm spam. Just know that I answer emails. When I was a teacher, we had a rule at the school. Like if you didn't answer an email within 24 hours, they pretty much could call the principal and be like, why isn't she contacting me? So I like live by that. <laughs> I always feel really, um, you know, like I have to answer emails. I can't, I can't just not, I can't just not answer an email. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna flip you guys over. I'm gonna show you two things, okay? So I'm gonna flip you guys around. It's funny because elementary, I was an elementary teacher. And uh, I mean, man, that was like the, the worst crime you could commit is to not return a parent's email. But my kids, as they've grown up, I don't think that's a rule in the middle schools and high schools because I will send teachers emails and never hear back. Never, I mean, I can't, I, I, it blows my mind. I don't know. In elementary school, that is a big no-no. All right, I'm trying to get this straight. Let's see, here's this week's host code. 
Um, if you like today's projects, I will send them to you for free if you place an order between now and Monday at midnight. Um, $35 or more using that host code, okay? That's what that is. But we'll get to that in a minute. Here is Club Create for December. Um, Club Create. I'm reading Judy's. I think the reason you have a problem with this problem, I had the problem when I switched my phone to Android. But I send all my emails on my computer, Judy. I don't ever send emails from my phone because I can't. <laughs> I have fat thumbs. I can't type very well. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it's disappointing, right, Lisa? Um, especially when dealing with kids. I mean, I just think, just answer the email. Anyway. Anyway. Um, okay, December Club Create is going to use the Modern Garden stamp set with the Modern Label. I mean, Modern, modern Oval Punch. Um, I love this paper. I feel like I say that every time. I love this paper. I, paper is like my favorite kind of paper crafting tool. I love paper a lot. So this paper is really inspiring to me. Um, this is December's Club. There's actually four cards in this kit and three... 3D projects. We're going to six by six paper. There's a lot of ways to use six by six paper. Um, in fact, this month's all-star tutorial project, the stacked boxes I just showed you, um, those all use that six by six paper. So I thought I was kind of like rolling with that idea for Club Create in December, showing you different ways to use your six by six designer series paper. So this is December's Club. Um, December's Club is not holiday, obviously. Um, and that's because I ship Club Create the 21st of the month is shipping day. I try to get it earlier, but the 21st is like my goal. Um, so obviously it will not get to you in time for the holidays. So this is for your post-holiday crafting when we are sick to death of Christmas. You can pull out your December Club Create kit and think about warm spring days coming. Um, Club Create is $45 a month. It is a subscription, so when you subscribe, um, you'll be charged every month on that same day unless you cancel, which you can cancel at any time. Um, you're never locked in. Um, but if you do stick around for six months and you subscribe for uh, six months, you get a $25 product credit on your six month. I send you an email and uh, you tell me what you want and I order it for you as a thank you. So it's kind of a good deal. The kits always include about $20 in product paper embellishments. Um, it includes usually five projects, a video and a PDF and shipping. That includes shipping as well. Okay, so that is Club Create. You can find the link for this. There's a tab at the top of my blog that says um, Club Create. And there is a link there for you on that page to subscribe if you would like. Um, calendar class. Christine asked me about um, creating a calendar class. So I am not, as of right now, I am 100% working on my retreat to go. <laughs> Hopefully after the holiday, um, after Thanksgiving, I'm going to try to do a calendar class. I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. I'm hoping to, um, but I, I don't 100% know yet. I usually do a calendar class and it's fun, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. We'll just say that. Um, this class, this is the Berry Christmas class to go. This was the add-on class for my holiday retreat, and I'm offering it as a standalone class. I can't get this straight. I keep seeing it in the corner of the camera. Um, <laughs> my OCD's cake man. There we go. Um, and so now I'm offering it to those of you who want to get it and didn't, you didn't want the retreat, but you wanted this class. It's six over-the-top cards, a couple of fun folds. You're going to get a lot of product in this class. I've actually cut and gotten them ready for um, the retreat, those who've added them to the retreat. Um, this is what they look like. You're also going to get a full pack of this paper, 12 by 12 paper, a bolt of ribbon, and a pack of embellishments. So if you would like this class, um, here is... The, where's the deadline? The deadline, I had a post-it note somewhere, maybe not. The deadline, I believe, is next Friday um, to, to order this. And I have them already cut, ready to go. They just I just need to order the product. So they will ship pretty quickly. Hopefully, the week of Thanksgiving, I can get these in the mail as well. Okay, so um, that is that. Um, there is a link today on, let's look at today's PDF that's over on my blog at pinkbuckroo.com. Um, on the second page, which is right here, this is the second page, 
there's a link for Club Create, a link for the Berry Christmas class, and a link for the All About Autumn All-Star PDF. If you go to um, my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, this is under the last photo. You click on that box that says click here for the free PDF, and it's going to have everything that we're going to do today, measurements, supply list, and those three things. It has host code as well, and everything you need to know. All right, I'm looking. Um, hi, Sam. All links on the website. All links are on the website today. So they are working, Trisha? Are they working? Everything's good. <laughs> Did that bag have snap? The one that the class kit is in? I think it was Velcro. Yeah, it's Velcro. It's Velcro. Okay, prize winner is Karen here this week. Karen Lopez, you are the winner of the Sending Cheer Bundle. Thank you for sharing my video last week, Karen. I do have your mailing address. Unless you've moved, um, let me know, okay? Um, next week, I'll give away the Merry and Bright bundle. So if you'd like to win, just share my video either on Facebook or YouTube. Let me know in the comments that you shared. And I will choose one person at random next week to win, okay? Okay. Um, lastly, I was just mentioning, if you like today's projects and you would like the, a kit that has them in it, um, this is what they look like when they come. Um, I cut them on Tuesdays, ship them on Wednesdays. So you get them pretty quickly. Um, I send them free with anybody who spends over $35 with me between now and Monday at midnight using that host code. Okay? Okie dokie. Now next week, next week's Facebook Friday. I think, I think, I'm, you know what? No, I'm not even going to tell you guys. Well, I want to do the owl. Everybody's been asking for the winter owl, but I don't know. Maybe, I feel like maybe we should do Christmas next week. I'm not sure. So stay tuned to see what we're going to do next week for Facebook Friday, okay? Okay, well, let's get started. Let me grab my first tray here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we're going to use Stampin' Blends today, and I want to be able to show you how I do the coloring. This card right here was a swap card that I made for our team swap. Um, my downline, my team, we do a swap every month. Um, we have different themes. I think this one was either Christmas or new, new catalog product. I can't remember, it's been a while. But um, this paper right here is the Traditions of St. Nick designer series paper. And it is so cute, has a little gingerbread man and a uh, little, I don't know, just, it's very holiday. Chris, candy cane cookies, got a little coffee cup. So I thought it would go perfect with this little cup of cheer stamp. All right, well, let's just do our coloring first because that's the most fun part. Um, like I mentioned, I'm using Stampin' Blends and we're also going to use on this card, my new favorite thing is the enamel effects. Um, we have two sets of enamel effects um, pearlized enamel effects, which is, which this one is from. And then, um, I think these are just called, but I typed it on the list. What are these called? Um, pearlized enamel effects and then metallic enamel effects. Is that right? I think that's right. There's two, the, the item codes are there for you. If you want to order them, they're really cool. I was explaining to my mom, they're almost like puff paint, kind of, almost like puff paint. Um, they kind of shrink down when they dry, but they're still, they have like a texture on them. All right, I'm gonna stamp this up in Memento Black on a basic white stylish shape circle, the largest, and I'm gonna bring my chair over here, and I remembered my glasses this week, so I'll actually be able to see what I'm doing. Hi, Emery, hello. The owls, yes, you guys want the owls. I know, I know, I know. That's what I have written down for the owls. And I will tell you that I have ordered something Harry Potter themed because I had an idea, but I'm not sure. So I never like to commit before I've actually made the projects because sometimes every now and then I'll get a stamp set and it's like, I can't, I, I just can't, I can't use it. I can't. The dry is, the well is dry for some reason, every now and then. But I do have a couple of things already made with the Winter Owl. Um, it's been interesting, that stamp set. It's not necessarily a specific Christmas stamp set. Um, and I, I don't know, part of me is like, you guys need Christmas stuff right now. But 
Everybody wants the owls apparently too. All right, so I used old olive for the leaves. I'm gonna use real red for the berries and the candy cane. I use light old olive and dark real red. I'm not doing any shading on those. For the candy cane, um, it's very small and the tip of your, the bullet end tip of your stamp and blend is a little bit fat. So you kind of just have to like tap that color in. And even with my glasses, I struggle. You just gotta go very slowly. Another option you could do on this candy cane is if you have the stamp and write markers, it has a finer tip on it. And you, I don't really like coloring with my stamp and write markers, except on small things like this, it's totally fine. Um, you know, if you were to color a big area with your stamp and write markers, it's gonna be streaky and not blend, and it's gonna kind of look like you did it with like Crayola markers. They're not really designed to color like that, like the blends are. But if you use them in a small area, you don't have to worry about that. So that's an option with the candy cane. Now I'm adding crumb cake to the chocolate chip cookie. I did light crumb cake. And then I just took dark crumb cake for the actual chocolate chips. Um, Lisa says I do the brush in for my tiny spaces. Yes, yes, as long as they're not frayed, which most, <laughs> which most of my markers are frayed. Hold on, I gotta grab my crumb, and my, I'm going out of order, so my markers are not in the right place. They're over on the other one. Um, most of my, <laughs> most of my, my brush tips are frayed. Um, because, you know, I like to flick um, ink a lot and that will fray them pretty fast. All right, I'm, I'm taking my smoky slate and I am using the brush tip here because I like to just flick this color in. Um, I'm doing a little smoky slate as a shadow. So wherever the cup overlaps the marshmallow or a marshmallow overlaps another marshmallow, I'm adding a little bit of smoky slate. And then I'm taking my um, color lifter and just pushing it out, pushing that color out to the center of the marshmallow, just to kind of give us a little bit of a shadow. And then the best color I found for the chocolate, the hot chocolate is, um, and I have number 400 written on it. When these first came out, they that's all they had was just numbers. And I haven't ordered these since, I don't know if they still say 400, but from what I could tell, these are the medium deep, this was from the medium deep combo pack, but I mean, any brown I think will work for your hot chocolate in here. And again, you just kind of want to tap the color in. There's not really a lot of space that's showing it. Okay, so there we go. We've got that. Um, for the card, I've got a piece of, um, this is the traditions, again, traditions of St. Nick designer series paper, which I really like. And I've got a piece of mossy meadow and I'm just gonna tear it like old school. You know, we used to do a lot of tearing in scrapbooking. Do you guys remember that? We used to do a lot of that. But I'm bringing it back. <laughs> bringing it back. Very basic technique. Now for this one, we're going to um, cut it at an angle. And you're gonna need your ruler. I mean, you could probably do this well, you can do this on your Simply Score. We're gonna mark at three-fourths of an inch over from the left edge. So I'm just gonna put a mark there. And then four, and I better check it. I believe it's four and a fourth. Let me see how far down we went. I just did this yesterday. You think I'd remember, yeah, four and a fourth. So then I'm gonna put it right there and make a mark. And now I'm gonna use my trimmer to cut a line from that dot to that dot. And you just wanna put them, get the dot in the gutter there of your trimmer, and then just slice it off. All right. Okay, whoa, hello, hello. Everything's flying. All right, um, didn't I already have my piece of out? Didn't I already have it out? Where did it go? I was using it earlier. Let me see, where did I put Oh yeah, it's over here. <laughs> Hold on. It's across the room. I was making tags for my very cute class. 
those little critters in that very cute designer series paper, I mean, they are so cute. The um, polar bears are cute, but the other critters in that paper, there's like a moose or deer or something. He's so cute. I love that paper. Okay, so we put that on, but we've got to cut it so that it's straight and it's matching the edge of our paper, okay? And then I've got a real red card base and I'm gonna put a this little piece right here. This is four by four. You don't need a whole piece. And then we'll put some adhesive here. And we're gonna overlap these two like that. And then let's bring this guy over. This card I really feel like would be good if you are looking for a Christmas card um, to, to mass produce. You know, like, okay, I've gotta make 50 cards. I feel like this would be a good one. Um, I'm just reading comments, making sure I didn't miss anything. My comments are delayed, it feels, I feel like. All right, put that right there. Then I'm saving my enamel effects to the very end because I told you guys the last few times that we've used this, you have to wait until the very end. You are gonna smear it. I promise if you don't, you're gonna smear it. You think you're not, but you're going to. <laughs> and you've gotta set it somewhere far, out of the reach. Okay, this is the burlap ribbon. It doesn't look very burlapy, but it's bur it comes in that combo pack that's called Burlap and Real Red Ribbon Combo Pack. It's in the annual catalog, I believe. And we'll put this cute little bow. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna take my Real Red enamel effects. I'm gonna put them there on my Little cranberries, berries, whatever they're called. No, they're not cranberries. They are just berries, holly berries. And you want to just kind of pull up. It makes like a little Hershey Kiss look, shape, like that. All right, and then I'm going to go a step further and add these just kind of like as embellishments. All right, just instead of pulling out my box and digging around for embellishments, I'm just going to put those scattered around like sequins. And there you go. Easy, right? Now, trust me when I say, go put this, get up off your desk and put it somewhere else. Because if you don't, you're going to put something on it. You're going to lay something on it. I do it every time, every single time. All right, there we go. Card one, not, not too difficult. And the reason I think that these would make good, um, you know, mass production, that doesn't really sound like the right word. Cards that you're gonna make multiples of is because there's little coloring. There's not a lot of coloring, right? I mean, we did color, but it was very minimal. Very small amounts of coloring. All right, the next project, I think this is my favorite this week. This is my favorite. It is a, and I can't decide, is it a bag or is it a box? What do you guys think? Is it a bag <laughs> or is it a box? It's actually a box and it's open and I put tissue paper in there so it kind of looks like a bag, right? This is a pretty big um, box. I think this would be good if you're gonna do, if you're gonna make cookies or fudge or toffee or whatever, put it in a cello bag and then put it in, put it in here, right? Um, you've got a lot of room. If you're gonna use Hershey Kisses, this is gonna take probably the whole bag <laughs> of Hershey Kisses. It's pretty big. It is pretty big, okay? All right, let's uh, let's make the box first. Let me, let's make the box first. Um, I'm using Poppy Parade because I am using the Merry Bold and Bright Designer Series paper, which is Poppy Parade. Poppy Parade is like a fun, happy red. Let me get my notes so I can look at where we're gonna score this. Remember, measurements are right here. Um, so it's seven and a fourth by 11, and we're gonna score the long side at four and a half and six and a half, and then turn it to the short side, and we're gonna score the short side at one. Nope, that's not right. 
how did I write that down wrong? I just literally typed this two minutes ago. That, am I looking at the right thing? It's five and a fourth and it should be two. Two and five and a fourth. Two. All right, if you already printed it out. Every week it's like I, ma I make you make a correction, right? Where's my pen? I gotta go correct it on the PDF. It's a two. Two and five and a fourth. All right. Now, grab your bone folder and burnish these lines. This is a very simple box. This also would be an easy one to reproduce. The hardest part of this box is cutting out those big contour scallops right here, this die, which I have right here somewhere to show you. Okay, maybe not. It's part of the contour scallop dies. The little, um, the little, these things right here stick in and you have to like poke them out. They don't come out. They don't just like fall out. <laughs> so that's literally gonna be the hardest part of this project. And obviously it's not that hard. It's just tedious. You should see when I use these for like club or a class, after I've cut them, there are red little dots everywhere. It's a messy die. Okay, so on the long side, we're gonna cut those uh, score lines up the middle like that. And then just cut the corners off of that middle tab like that. All right, and then we're just gonna put adhesive here on the outside and fold it in to that side and then put adhesive here on the inside and fold it over like it's hugging the other side of the box. Like that, and I mean, very basic, right? Super easy. Um, then, I have already cut these out, two Poppy Parade uh, pieces, and I'm gonna put this, uh, oh, I love that pattern, it's so cute. I hate to put it on the back, but it's too busy for what we're doing. Um, this piece of designer series paper, the measurements are there on the, on the um, PDF, and we're going to adhere this. I'm using Stamp and Seal on this. I really think Stamp and Seal is fine for this kind of box. Um, I'm gonna start like this. I'm just gonna set it down in there, make sure that I've got it in between the scallops and then push your adhesive down. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. And really this time you just wanna make sure that they are even when you stand it up. So you can just kind of stick it on there Take a look at it, make sure it's in the middle, and press down your adhesive. Okay, so cute. Now let's do our little Santa. We're gonna stamp him in again, Memento. Thanks, Stacy. Memento Black. I like this image the best. This is my favorite stamp in the set. Now we are gonna cut this out with paper snips and I know some of you don't like to do that. And if that's you, then just leave it as a rectangle. Just cut your paper down so that it's just a, a rectangle around your Santa. All right, let's start with Poppy Parade. And I'm gonna start with Poppy Parade Light. Um, 12 days of Christmas. So I've been mulling that over. Um, I think I'm gonna do it differently this year. Yes, I am gonna do a 12 days of Christmas, but I, I'm not gonna do a live every day. Um, I haven't decided yet. That's, I'm, I'm simplifying things a little bit for myself, but yes. The other, the other stressful part, well, I mean, stressful, I mean, keep that in perspective. <laughs> this is paper crafting. The other stressful thing about doing 12 days of Christmas is that at that point, the last chance list, AKA the retired list will have come out and things will be selling out. And you guys know I'm a planner, so I plan way ahead. So I'll design projects like a week ahead or a week and a half, two weeks ahead. And then it sells out and then I'm stuck like, ugh, you know, 
I really wasted my time making a project that now I really shouldn't be showing because it's sold out. So, and it seems to happen every year with at least one of the bundles. Um, what I'm doing is adding some dark poppy parade in to make some shadows, but it's still fun the 12 days of Christmas. So I think I will probably do it. I think I'm just going to do it differently. I have actually been thinking about that and the calendar class. I, you know, when I have something big like this retreat to go, it um, kind of stills all of my brain cells for a while. So I, it's like I can't even hardly think about it very much because I have to think about this thing that's right in front first. But yeah, it's coming. After Thanksgiving, I will get to the, both of those things. All right, so light poppy parade, dark poppy parade, the bow, the dots. Um, I'm going to use dark here for this ribbon. There is an individual pre-recorded video of these three projects over on YouTube. And if you need some better coloring instruction than what I'm giving here, um, go over to those videos. Um, I zoom in and I spend some more time on it, talking about it rather than, you know, all the random things that we, that we always talk about during Facebook Friday. Um, so just know that if you would like some more specific instruction to hop over there and check those out. They're linked under the project pictures too. Um, yeah, you know, I, I do know that um, Tony says if something sells out, others may still have that set. And if they don't, you can always use a set. That's true. But I will tell you that every time I do that, I get some nasty gram from somebody. <laughs> that says, why did you show that? I wanted it and now I can't buy it. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, I feel like, oh, I know. There's always gonna be somebody who's not happy, right? Always, and that's usually what I do. That is usually what I end up doing is showing it because I hate to waste a cute project and not show it, especially if I've filmed a video for it. For sure, I agree. I agree. Okay, this is Granny Apple Green Light. And I'm also going to take it and do dots on this present, like polka dot paper. I always buy um, Christmas wrapping paper at Hobby Lobby, first of all. Let's just discuss the quality of Hobby Lobby's Christmas paper is the best. It's thick, it doesn't tear, and it has grid lines on the back that make it really easy. Second, I buy three different patterns each year. One for each kid, so then I don't have to put tags on them. And they never know whose presents are whose until the morning of Christmas. You know, I'm like, okay, your stripes, your polka dots, your plaid or whatever. Um, and so I always buy a stripe and a polka dot. I like just the geometric patterns. Um, okay, so we've done that. Let's get balmy blue now. And we'll do this present up here. Now I posted a card yesterday that has this image on it as well. And I thought I set it over here. I'm going to have to see where it is so I can show you at the end of the video. But if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go check it out. It uses that awesome granny apple green foil. You know, it comes in granny apple green and melon mambo. I didn't know I needed foil and hot pink and hot fancy green. You know, like a, it's almost like a neon green but I love it. That's really foil that you'll use all year long too. Okay, so poppy, I mean, um, balmy blue. Last but not least, let's do gloves and boots. And I am using Smoky Slate because basic black, we have basic black Stampin' Blends, but they are very dark. And I feel like you lose some of your detail in your black line images. So I only use them on small, little small areas, usually. So I'm using that. And see how I left the toes white? So that it looks, we're gonna, we're gonna do something else to it, but I wanted it to look like it was shining. And then I'm gonna come back in with my dark, um, smoky slate and add in some shadow here on these gloves. Then I'm gonna take my color lifter again, 
and just blend his little toes there so that it's not such a harsh, you know, hard line. And there you go. Now also, this is a great place for you to use your Wink of Stella. So we can add Wink of Stella to the gifts, you know, maybe some of the stripes, like this. So how is the weather where you guys are at? You know me, I gotta know what the weather's doing. It's very cool and fallish here. We're liking it. Some of us, I don't think everybody, but I do like it. Um, does anybody have snow yet? I know Lisa, my friend who lives in New Mexico, posted they have some snow today. It seems, I mean, I guess it's mid-November. It's about that time, right? I know you guys who live in very cold climates feel about winter the way I feel about summer. I hate summer because it never ends. It feels like it never ends. Where's the most perfect weather? Where's the most perfect place that has the best weather? What do you guys think? Is it California where you don't have endless days of one extreme or the other? You know, here it's 150. 15 degrees for like 200 days. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. That's what it feels like. Hawaii, oh yes, Lisa. But but you know what also, I think if you live somewhere beautiful like Hawaii, this time of the year or around Christmas, you probably do crave a little bit of change, you know, like fall leaves and some coolish weather. I don't know, that's just what I would think. Chilly, rainy, 45 in Michigan. Hmm, Marsha. Marsha, I'm reading a book right now that takes place in Michigan. Tom Lake, have any of you read that? Tom Lake takes place in Michigan. 85 degrees, <laughs> Christy, I know. Come here, because we're going to have them again, I think, next week. 85 degrees. We, You know, it just, we're ne it's just we're never happy with where we're at, I guess. Fall is my favorite, too. Now, Carol, Arizona gets very hot in the summer. I think you guys are like us. Now, I don't know where Green Valley, Arizona is. Maybe it's higher in, in elevation. Colorado, it's fair and a little sunny. But, Laura, you guys get very cold there too, right? Very cold. Kathy says we had snow on Halloween. There was a weird cold snap this year on Halloween. It seemed like everywhere. San Francisco area. Sue, now I think you probably win. Yes. I think if I had to choose somewhere that had perfect weather. Anne-Marie, I thought you were going to say San Antonio has perfect weather. <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say. Like, you are a liar. Um, this is a Granny Apple Green Christmas tree cut with the Marius Trees dies. Isn't that a cute little tree? Um, I also embossed it with the one of the embossing folders from the Basics 3D embossing folders. Another online exclusive. And this is a radiating stitches die. And then um, we're going to put our little Santa dude there. Yeah, I feel like California. So Carol, near Tucson, that's pretty hot, isn't it? It's pretty hot. I love Florida, Lisa, but you're right. This time of year, it's going to be hot. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be hot, hot, but it's going to be not really any fall colors in Florida, right? Yeah, a lot of snow. A lot of snow on Halloween. Anne-Marie, perfect if you like living on the surface of the sun for nine months out of the year. That's always what I say. Us people here in San Antonio, we have a little bit of gr a grudge with the heat. It's always hot, but this last summer was the hottest summer we've ever had, and we're, we're, we're not over it yet. We're still, we're still all having, <laughs> what's the word, um, our, our heat trauma from the summer. Um, this is a stylus shape banner from the stylus shape dies. And this to and from is from the sending cheer bundle. The one that has a little gingerbread man in it that I just gave to, um, Karen as a prize to and from, and then we'll put, Oh, I already did dimensionals. Ah, oh, well, we'll put them on the back. Um, our little Santa goes there. And you know what? We're gonna put, we're gonna double, we're gonna double up on the dimensionals right here because he's kind of, if I put him here with dimensionals, he's kind of going leaning down because there's already a dimensional under here and here. So I've doubled up so he'll be more like flush. Maybe he might even need three, but I'm not gonna do three. 
All right, now dimensionals on the back. Joan, rain in Washington State. That seems pretty pretty normal, right? Don't you guys have something like, well, I don't want to misspeak, but don't you guys have a lot of rain in Washington State? Oh, Trisha, Orange County, Cal Orange County California, where it could be 55 or 105 on Thanksgiving Day. Yes, you know, th that's true here as well. It, it can be shorts for Thanksgiving or it can be fall weather. You just never know. All right, let's put this right here in the middle. And then last but not least, let's use my favorite ribbon, the very vanilla, black and very vanilla large check ribbon. I don't care that it says very vanilla on it. I'm using it with basic white and I think it's just fine. It's the cutest ribbon. It's even cuter than our other, I think. I mean, I love our other black and white ribbon, but I just, I don't know, I love this one even more. You guys know me, I love a buffalo check. All right, there we go. And then you stuff it with your goodies and you can just put your tissue paper in and you have some really cute boxes. That is, I mean, that's a pretty easy project, don't you think? These would be great gifts. And it doesn't have to be treats. I mean, maybe if you were giving your team members at work fuzzy socks or, you know, I don't know. A lot of different things could go in here. Um, you know what I like to give um, to girlfriends and stuff, just or maybe like coworkers if we're doing Secret Santa, those Alex and Ani bracelets. Have you guys seen those? They're relatively affordable. They would fit really well in here with some tissue paper. This would be a good box for that. I don't know, just an idea. Okay, one more. Gosh, I feel like I'm going so fast again this week. No snake stories to distract me. All right, last but not least, we're gonna do a money holder. Not to be confused with a gift card holder. This is specifically designed to hold money. And <laughs> I won't tell you that an M&M just bounced off the tray onto the floor. And there's no M&Ms in this project. I was, I was doing something with M&Ms right before I went live. And one, they were bouncing everywhere. Um, so this was my original project. And it uses the Shining, oh, what was this called? This paper. It has since sold out. And unfortunately, so I decided to recreate it with the Mary Bold and Bright designer series paper. I have put photos of both over on my blog. So if you have this paper and you would like to use it, you can see, you can use this paper. You can use any paper. That's the beauty of this project, especially because the only color that we're coloring is um, the tops of those gifts. So you can make it match any. I don't have any snake stories, Nancy. No snake stories. Although every time I open my door, I look around, I tiptoe around. Anne-Marie came over yesterday to drop something off and she was like, uh, if there's a snake, I, I'm not getting out of my car. I'm like, don't worry, I've moved all the things away from my door. So hopefully there will be no snakes hiding. It's too cold, I think, for snakes now. I mean, in the 50s, I do really think that's too cold for snakes. One never knows, though. One never knows. Okay, never say never, right? And now every time I want to say if it was a snake, it would have bit me. I'm like, don't say that anymore because really... That snake could have bit you. <laughs> Henry says, I checked that bag that you left out like four times before I picked it up. Yeah, that's me. Every time now, if I get like an Amazon delivery or something, I'm like looking around it. I'm kicking things around. I mean, when you find a copperhead coiled outside your door, it changes you. <laughs> it changes you. Okay, this is a piece of thick basic white, seven by six and three fourths. On the long side, we're gonna score it at one and four. I think that we have a reprieve from the snakes until spring, hopefully. And we have a guy coming to work on our backyard, hopefully to get rid of all the rocks and the brush. Yes, I've been through some things for sure. <laughs> I have been, and then, and then, okay, if you miss the snake stories, we had a rat snake coiled up, and rat snake's not gonna hurt you. But to look over underneath your glass top table and have a rat snake coiled up underneath a glass, that will traumatize you as well. It will, and I will never stop talking about it. Um, okay, <laughs> fold the little one inch part up and then this one goes over it, okay? 
Money is perfect for pretty much anybody. Um, and I've been saying teenagers really like money. But, you know, I think my teenagers would be like, Mom, can you just Venmo or Cash App? <laughs> so maybe this isn't even good for teenagers. I don't know. Maybe you could just put a fake dollar in and say, I'm sending you Venmo <laughs> for 20 bucks or whatever. Um, okay, so for the front, we're going to do... Yesterday when I made the other video, I had the wrong measurement. So I got this out and double checked and I'm pretty certain that we're right today. Okay, so Mel and Mambo and our Mary Bold and Bright. And I'm gonna put that right on the front. Concert tickets, oh, that's a great idea. Any kind of tickets. Sometimes people um, are looking for ideas for gifts that aren't things like a zoo membership, right? Or a, like you said, tickets to uh, the theater or a concert. And this would be good for that too. Very good idea. Okay, so now I've got this silver trim, another online exclusive. And we're gonna do kind of a little fake out here where we're gonna tape it down. And then we're gonna wrap it around like that. And then we're gonna tape it, let's get it so that it looks like it's pinched there in the middle. And you know what? Okay, just making sure I didn't go around the outside of it. Like that, okay? So there we go. Then we're gonna put this here in a sec, but let's do all the, the paper first. Then we've got this paper, and you can put this paper on first before you do that ribbon if you want. I've done it both ways. Or you can do it like this and hide it. Uh-oh, this piece is too long. I thought I trimmed them all down, but apparently I did not. There we go, okay. And then we've got this little strip right here that's gonna go down on the bottom. It's gonna cover up our staples. Memories to your grandchildren. The twins give us two ideas on Broadway musicals coming to the city. Oh, that, see, that's a great idea, Sue. Because it really does become kind of like how much more, you know, stuff can we buy? That's a really good idea, giving them memories. I like that idea. Okay, so let's do our stamping. We're going to stamp this guy in Memento Black again. Like that. And then I'm gonna pull my chair back over because I cannot stand and color. All right, Melon Mambo or Poppy Parade, whichever one you wanna do here. I'm choosing Melon Mambo because I don't get to use Melon Mambo nearly enough, I feel like. I feel like it's not used in our DSP very often. So when it is, I really try to use it because it's probably my favorite color of all our colors. It is, it is my favorite. Now that I think about it, it's definitely my favorite. What is y'all's favorite Stampin' Up color? And Sue, Sue, I think it was Sue, who said, I haven't talked about what I'm watching on TV. We really haven't watched anything this week. We finished all the light we cannot see, which I couldn't wait for, but I was completely disgusted because it was just absolutely not how the book was. It still was beautiful. And I'm sure if you haven't read the book or like my mom who hadn't read the book in a long time, you will like it. But for me and my husband who just reread the book again, literally like two weeks ago, we were pretty disgusted by all the ridiculous changes. Um, we're gonna go see, we like Marvel movies, so we're gonna go see the Marvels this weekend. You know, I don't like this light Melon Mambo. I'm gonna make this dark Melon Mambo here. Um, but other than that, we had a busy like kid week this week of things that we had to do. So there wasn't any movie watching, but I did finish a book called, um, I, you know, you read a book and then you, like five minutes later, can't remember the name of it. Are you guys like that? What was it called? The Wishing Game. 
The Wishing Game. It's been one of those that's all over all the lists right now. And um, it's just, it was okay. It was a little strange. But, I don't know. I couldn't, like, it was one of those that I got to, like, about 30%. And I was like, do I want to finish this or do I just want to move on? But I sucked it up and finished it. And I'm glad I did. I mean, it's cute, but definitely not one of my favorites of the year. So, The Wishing Game. Has anybody read that? It's really strange, and I don't even know how to describe it. Basically, it's this um, children's author. What I am doing, the same thing I did with the marshmallows, is I added some smoky slate to the side of the gifts, and I'm taking my color lifter and just blending it down so we have some shadow. So The Wishing Game is about this children's author who wrote all these super famous children's books, and then he kind of like fell off the face of the earth for a while. And then he's decided to write one more and he's going to give it away. He does a contest at his house and he invites four of his fans to his house to do this contest. And it's just kind of bizarre. It's just kind of bizarre. I'll leave it at that. It had a very interesting premise. But um, I don't know. Anyhow, after Tom Lake, I've got several things in my queue. I don't know what's next. What are you guys reading? Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Thanks, Patricia. Money holders are good, right? Beetlejuice tickets. Uh, Beetlejuice on Broadway. Um, yeah, or just a movie. That's for sure. You know, my kids are just meh with the movies. Like, we're like, oh, we're going to the movies, you know, on Saturday. T 10 now, buy tickets like, on Wednesday. We're going to go to the movies on Saturday. We'll, you know, buy on the heads. We get good seats. And the kids are like, meh, I'll just stay home. I don't know why. I guess when you have a device attached to you at all times, you are able to hang out with your friends without hanging out with them. That's, I think that's why my kids don't really ever want to go anywhere. It's because they're just hanging out with their friends. We make them go sometimes. But sometimes we're like, bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> you can stay here. Um, okay, so now I've colored this. We're going to put this on here like this, kind of angled. And then we're going to, I told you we were kind of faking this whole like tied on look. Glue dots, glue dots, where did they go? They were here. Here they are. Okay, good. I was like, are they right in front of me again? All right, glue dots right here. And so it looks kind of like it's tied on, but it's not, right? Um, okay, for now. Oh, Christina, I'll have to check that one out. I haven't heard of that one. All right, so for the inside, I decided to do some embossing of the little... I can't decide. What do you guys think? These are snowflakes or stars? I'm guessing they're snowflakes. These right here. I mean, it matches on here, but here I think they're stars. But then here, I'm like, well, maybe they're snowflakes. I don't know. Whatever. We're going to stamp them, and then we're going to emboss them in silver. So I'm going to put them in the corner there and the corner here. This is Versmark, which is a clear ink. And then we're going to sprinkle on some silver embossing powder. Like that. Move that over, grab my heat tool. I kind of like sitting down. Usually I, well, I always stand up when I make videos, but I'm sitting down and I kind of like it. Maybe I need to be sitting down. Nancy, I read Janet Ivan Ivanovich many years ago. I read like up until like number 10, I think. Her books are fun. She's And she's still putting out books in that series, right? Those are fun books. It's been a while, though. Janet Ivanovich. Is that how you say her name? Yeah, she's good. And to be able to come up with more and more ideas with the same character, that's amazing. All right, Merry Christmas. Look how cute this font is. Merry Christmas. This is from The Rocking Horse. I wish I could write like that. My mother, I don't know if she's here. She has very good handwriting and she could probably totally write that like that. I have had horrible handwriting 
my whole life until I started teaching kindergarten. And then I had to teach handwriting and I think it improved my handwriting, but it still does not look like that. She's all the way up to 30, Nancy. That's incredible. The measure, Linda. Okay, I'll look that one up too. The measure. My favorite kind of book is a historical fiction. That's my favorite kind. But I'll read other things too. As Bright as Heaven. Ooh, that one's interesting. Number 30 was just... So Nancy, what number are you on? Have you read 29 of them already? That is a lot. She must be rich. <laughs> she... I mean, to keep cranking those babies out, I'm impressed. Okay, last but not least, I have these festive pearls. Aren't these in the annual catalog? Somebody tell me. I'm 99.9% .9 sure these are not online exclusives, that they are in the annual catalog. These little festive pearls. They're very festive. I like them. And I'm just going to put them right here, these little shiny silver ones. Let's see. On to our little snowflake slash stars. And there we go. You've read them all. Get them at the library. Nancy, that's really cool that you have said you, you've read them all. That is really cool. Charm bracelet. Oh, now you guys are giving me the hotel on the corner of Bitter and Sweet, too. I like that title. Um, okay, you guys, keep telling us your favorite books. Keep telling us what you've read. Um, the last bookstore in London. I haven't heard of that one. The Book of Lost Names, Christina. I finished that book in the middle of the night while I was laying in bed and I cry I was crying so hard that I thought I was gonna wake my husband up. <laughs> the Book of Lost Names is a very good book. And Salt to Sea, I have not read that one. I'll have to look for that. While you craft, do you keep a Kindle or what app? You, um, so Elizabeth, there's an app called Libby and it's the library app. If you have a library card, you put your library number in there and you can borrow books from the library, um, both digital books and audio books. And so usually what I do is I'll request both of them. Sometimes you have to wait. And then I'll listen to it on Libby during the day. And that night I read it. Because when you download the digital, it'll go to your Kindle. and Or you can read it through the Libby app too. And then I read the at night in bed. I'll read the, you know, the actual book. Killer the Flyer Moon, Nancy. That that one, I have I have looked at it many times. And I don't think I can handle it. I don't know. Have you seen it? Have you seen the movie? I'm not sure I can handle it. Salt to Sea is amazing. So is The Glass Ocean. Man, I'm going to have to come back and write all these down. One of my favorite books, A Hotel in the Quarter of Bitter and Sweet. Okay, I haven't even heard of that one. Guys, thank you. Thank you for the recommendations. Okay, here we go. Money holder, done. Which one do you like better? Is this called Shining Christmas? That's not what this is called, is it? Yeah, Shining Christmas. You know, Janine, everyone is reading Colleen Hoover, and I have tried, and I got bored with the first one that I tried. I need to try again, because I know people who are obsessed with Colleen Hoover. I, I need to give it another try. Okay, which one do you like better, Shining Christmas or Mary Bold and Bright? Anne Marie's is called Shining Christmas. I can't remember. You like Mary and Bright? You like them both? I think this is my favorite, even though these are my favorite colors. I don't know. Maybe it's the... The white cardstock. Maybe I should have used colored cardstock. I don't know. What do you think? Anyways, now I have four. Four money. Who's going to get money? Not my kids. <laughs> They're not getting money. Okay. Oh, so Nancy. So it was okay. Well, then that does make sense. Yeah. I would think that would make it even harder too to know that maybe in your history like that. I, I don't know. You know, I, I've read a lot of World War II books. And then every time I'm done, I'm like, I'm never reading a World War II book again. Because they, like, are devastating, right? And then and then I read another one. <laughs> I have to take a break from sad books and then read something, like, silly. Like, some kind of Regency romance or something stupid like that. Okay, you guys. All right, all right. Keep sharing your books. We'll all come back and write them down. So we made the gift holder, the money holder. I have, I have some other cards to show you. This one's going to be on the blog on Monday. Look at this one. This is the um, um, Berry Christmas paper, and it's got these, uh, it's like a shaker that you just use a clear envelope and make a shaker. Isn't that neat? And then inside, you could just put a strip 
uh, BSP and put a gift card. Isn't that gift card cute? I got that at Michael's several years ago. <laughs> I love it. It has no money on it, but I just keep it around for props. It's very cute. Um, but anyway, there's that one. So that will be on Monday. This is a swap I got from Chris. And look, it's that we made this card recently when we did um, Rustic Crate, remember? And it opens up like that. Isn't that cute? And she cut it out. Now, wait a minute. I gotta find the card I posted Monday. Did I, where did I leave it? I was using it to type it up and now I don't know what I did with it. Where is it, you guys? Hold on, hold on, I gotta find it. Oh man, I don't know where I put it. Oh, you know what? Oh, I already hung it up. Okay, hold on, hold on. I hung it on my wall already. I'm coming back, I'm coming back. It's right here. This was yesterday's. So cute. There's that green foil. Okay, so you've got lots of ideas now. Um, I, again, this will be Monday. If you like today's projects, um, remember, you. I will send them as a kit for you to you for free with a minimum order of $35 using this host code. Let's see if I can zoom out. This host code right here. Um, it's also on my blog and on today's PDF. And next week may or may not be the winter owls. I'm not promising. Although I'm 75% sure to be the winter owls. If not, I think it might be sending cheer. Either way, I'm going to do both of them. I just don't know which one's going to come first. <laughs> okay. You guys have a great week. Thanks for joining me. I will see you on next Friday. Okay. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.